Let's get into the uh, trip planning process. So firstly, let me explain some of the uh, tools that I use. Obviously, we've got a pencil here. Um, uh, whenever I go on any trip, I always like to uh, organize my uh, gear in a folder. So I take a bit of a collection. Uh, obviously, I'm planning this out for a little while. So I start collecting information, a great source of information. Uh, if you're out a lot of these four-wheel drive shows, there's often uh, people and information, um, you know, for certain areas across Australia. Um, they're always happy to help, but obviously they're trying to encourage people to come in your area. So they're offering a lot of uh, maps and information and uh accommodation and that sort of stuff that you might be interested in first and foremost for me every trip starts with a good uh, map you know you need a good paper map for your own safety as well i wouldn't travel anywhere without a um, some sort of uh, maps um, whether it's a malways uh, whether it's a detailed map of australia uh, or the local area that you're uh, traveling to i wouldn't travel anywhere you know we've got a number of electronics available to us now google maps um, we've got hema maps here on my um tablet but you never know when those electronics are going to fail you and as a general rule these things don't generally fail you so um, if you can't afford uh, something like that um, you know that might be a bit out of your budget uh, so I think that was probably about 10-15 dollars uh, from memories Hema uh, you know make a, a decent range of maps um, if you're looking at Victoria rooftop maps are absolutely uh, fantastic but there's a number of other companies that produce uh, pretty good quality maps um, do your research and I'm sure you'll find uh, some good information. Um, if that's out of your budget though, um, we often uh, can come across these. Uh, this is from Outback Bed. So this is a commercial map that was produced. Um, obviously it's a bit of advertising. And uh, essentially what this is, is just a, a, a quick overview of the area that, uh, you know, specifically in this instance we're wanting to visit. So. They make a lot of these small, you know, less detailed maps for a lot of the areas. Ring up your, uh, you know, information center for the state that you're traveling to, and they'll be more than happy to send them out. Or you can jump online and often uh, download a lot of them from there as well. So let's start by talking about some of the electronic uh, options that are available to you as well, just as a backup, and also um, really just goes well with the uh, a lot of the trip planning uh, that you do. So you know what's available here is Google Maps. I've also got Hema four wheel drive. There's uh, Wiki Camps Australia, Camper Mate. There's a number of um, apps that are, are specific to touring and traveling uh, and really helpful. Wiki Camps is a great um, place to start for looking for uh, camp locations. Uh, if you're a bit more remote, Hema Full Drive uh, Maps has some uh, great camping locations in that uh, for you as well. Because this is a GPS tablet, it uh, can track my... Um, track my travels as well which is fantastic and you can often record those as well for when you get back um, and that, that can sometimes be important for some people so when you're planning a, a, a trip initially we start with the map to give you an idea of distances often uh, these maps and uh, sometimes more detailed maps can be a bit better for this but uh, they will have the uh, kilometers uh, recorded uh, in between on the main roads that you're traveling and that gives you a bit of an insight into the distances that you may be traveling. Um, another great place to start with that as well is, uh, you know, if you're doing this in front of the computer, you've got Google Maps, you can, um, you know, put in the locations of Madura to Broken Hill, for example, and give you, uh, you know, obviously the best uh, route there and uh, give you an estimated time and distance as well. So that's really good in uh, helping you plan. So let's get into the uh, trip plan. So what I want to do in this instance is go through my Outback New South Wales trip and show you what I'll, what was involved in the planning around that. Now you can you might decide to use the um, trip plan that I'm about to give you of the Outback New South Wales. Um, feel free. It was an absolutely great trip that I did in around a week's time and um, you know saw some beautiful parts of our country. So my trip started from Melbourne. Uh, from Melbourne uh, to Mildura is um, a great starting point for the Outback New South Wales. Um, Mildura is a pretty big town. It's a gorgeous town um, on the Murray River. We stayed at the, uh, I was there with my brother in this instance. Uh, this trip was uh, planned around my 50th birthday. Um, so my brother wanted to take me out. Now a place that I would highly recommend is Stefano's Restaurant in Mildura. Uh, Stefano's, uh, you know, look him up. He's a well-known um, celebrity chef. I believe these, this is one of the few restaurants outside of a major city that's actually won uh, quite a few awards and stuff. Um, 
I wasn't overly excited to be honest about the idea of going there but after going there I absolutely uh, loved and appreciated uh, what was on offer. Um, it's, a, it's a magnificent um, experience and uh, I highly recommend uh, Stefano's restaurant for anyone that may be interested. The Discovery uh, Caravan Park is right on the river as well. We actually booked a cabin for the night. So this trip we did with the uh, camper trailer and uh, swag. So for our first night, decided to get a little bit slack and uh, wanted to be comfortable having a nice night out for dinner. Uh, we decided to stay in the cabin um, and it was definitely uh, worth our while. So the Outback New South Wales trip for me really began around uh, Madura. Um, from there we travelled uh, over the border um, and over the Murray Bridge into Wentworth and from Wentworth up Silver City uh, Highway up towards Broken Hill. Broken Hill is a gorgeous little area, pretty big sized town, plenty of opportunities uh, to stay up there if you like or um, there's some uh, good caravan parks and uh, camping sites around. Again, if you've got Wikicamps or, or one of those um, apps, uh, it helps you find those locations. Silver is one of the main components uh, being mined over around Broken Hill. There's plenty of uh, pubs, plenty of uh, restaurants, plenty of uh, shopping, uh, plenty of things to do in Broken Hill. You can definitely spend a few days there. Um, and there's some lovely uh, things to see. For us in this instance, we traveled out to Silverton, uh, which is about 20 k's out of Broken Hill. Um, it's actually west. Silverton is really a photographer's paradise. It's a um, beautiful outback little town, lots of uh, old buildings and um, all nicely spread out. And uh, it just really is gorgeous. If you've you know got a camera, definitely take it with you. Um, you'll be absolutely um, in love with uh, some of the areas, uh, some of the um, sites that uh, Silverton has to offer. Um, Silverton's uh, also known for the Mad Max movie. Mad Max 2 was filmed out. This is essentially the wastelands, um, and that's about 20 k's out of Silverton, a place called Monday Monday Lookout. So I highly recommend uh, a visit to Monday Monday Lookout and a view of the um, sunset there essentially Monday Monday lookout faces west as far as the eye can see and uh, it's flat and it's gorgeous and um, you get some absolutely gorgeous sunsets now one of the, my um, biggest tips that I'm going to give you uh, for this video is stick around for the sunset don't just wait for the sun to go down watch it as the sun goes down afterwards because what actually happens is uh, you get this magnificent light show of uh, the colors changing behind the horizon um, it's absolutely gorgeous and then at the end of all that just essentially goes pitch black and just the stars light up it's absolutely gorgeous the number of people I've uh, been there a couple of times now and the number of people that just sit there watch the sun go down three minutes afterwards they're heading off and they've missed the best part of the show so I highly recommend that for anyone that's visiting out there um, now from uh, Broken Hill Silverton you can travel north up to Cameron's Corner um, this is essentially the gateway to Cameron's Corner absolutely uh, great drive um, there's a dingo fence that runs uh, along the uh, Victoria, uh, sorry, along the New South Wales Queensland border, up there. Um, and you can, if you like, uh, you know, I think the main highway there is the Silver City Highway that goes up to, um, you know, uh, up to Cameron's Corner. Uh, but you can actually go off track and follow the border um, track along, um, which is uh, quite an interesting drive. Now, for um, anyone that may be interested. Uh, I came across a place called the Pine View Station um, and uh, contact Alicia there. You can look that up. Um, I'll uh, try and put the information there in the description uh, before we finish as well. Now, essentially, uh, this is just a big um, cattle station. Um, Alicia's uh, one of the family members that looks after this area and it uh, borders on the um, New South Wales uh, Queensland border and it's a great way to uh, travel out to um, the border track or a great great starting point uh, so I highly recommend that I didn't actually go there in the uh, last trip that I did um, but I, I can highly recommend it um, place is also known for uh, good pig hunting and, um, and other sorts of hunting as well so if you're a hunter that's uh, a great place to uh, visit as well and uh, no doubt Alicia will uh, help you get set up there. Um, so for myself, 
from Silverton, we actually traveled west essentially, uh, a little bit uh, kind of northwest, uh, but Barry Highway towards Wilcannia, but we uh, headed off to White Cliffs. So White Cliffs uh, is renowned, I think it's uh, known for being one of the first areas um, for mining um, quartz and um, opals. And uh, you basically, look, I've got a video um, uh, there that hopefully I'll put out shortly uh, on the campgrounds in the area. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of digging, a lot of mining in the area. Um, a lot of the uh, t a lot of the town is actually built underground, so it doesn't look like a lot. But there's a ma there's a motel that uh, um, is uh, built underground, and there's a lot of homes that are built underground. And if you want to do a few tours and that there, there's um, you know plenty of information uh, available to you online or, or visit the locals. Um, so from White Cliffs, we traveled down to Opal Miners Way, Wilcannia. So I think we actually uh, traveled inland a little bit and uh, took um, some dirt roads um, down to Wilcannia. Again, beautiful country. I'll, put, I'll try and put some of those tracks out there as well, just to give you a bit of an insight into uh, the condition of some of those tracks. Um, just as a general note, most of the tracks that I did could potentially be done with two-wheel drive in good conditions, uh, four-wheel drive probably in some rougher conditions. Uh, you will get a bit of a wear and tear, so a little bit of vibration, corrugations, that sort of stuff. Um, but it's nothing really that most um, caravans or, or, or cars can handle. Um, just again, when on roads like that, always make sure that you get out and do regular checks and make sure things are tight. Because uh, even on my off-road camper trail, I did see uh, some of the some of the bits and pieces come loose and need tightening before you start to lose things. Well, Kenya again is uh, quite a small town with the uh, Darling River running through it. Now, if you wanted to do a trip following the Darling River, you can essentially go out from White Cliffs, um, head out towards Burke and um, you know travel all the way down there if you like but in this instance I went from White Cliffs uh, to Wilcannia and from Wilcannia we um, had nice lunch there, uh, nice little pub and can of meals, um, always support local businesses uh, where you can um, and we traveled from um, Wilcannia, followed the river essentially or River Run Road uh, down to Menindi Lakes or Menindi area um, which is renowned for the lakes so that is the Kinchiga National Park so there's a whole heaps of lakes I've definitely got some footage of the area as well that I can uh, show you of um, that particular area definitely worth a visit uh, depending on where you stay I had the dog in this instance as well so I was a bit limited uh, obviously I can't stay in national parks um, but uh, we found some uh, fantastic uh, locations. Most of the locations I found offered uh, toilets and um, you know some even showers as well. So uh, definitely um, well organised and uh, well set up for uh, any travellers. So from Menindi we travelled down again towards Poonkari along the Darling River. So lots of nice places to stop. A lot of the um, land around there is privately owned so be careful if you are going to head off the main tracks um, at all. Uh, I highly recommend making sure someone knows where you're going because if you do head off some of these tracks um, and get stuck it may be a while before anyone comes uh, across and finds you um, but it's uh, definitely some beautiful country that's worth seeing and um, you know if you've got a decent uh, setup for driver tour um, you'll have no problems uh, covering most of this area. Uh, Punkari offers uh, again great camping on the Darling River. Um, I know there's showers and toilets there. Um, there's paid sites that you can go through to the uh, pub and organise or, or, or through the local uh, eatery and um, that's just one option there. Uh, there is some free camping there as well if you've got your wiki camps and that sort of stuff. Um, you'll find uh, some other locations as well uh, that may not have uh, toilets and facilities. Uh, so from Poonkari, we travelled again east to war, towards the Mungo National Park. So this is the Wallandra Lakes World Heritage Area. Um, I imagine at some point these uh, this country just gets completely flooded. Um, essentially, uh, when I'm driving through on my HEMA maps, it was showing a lot of the area was actually uh, showing up as lakes. 
Um, so it's obviously a flood area, so do look up and do some research and make sure before you go you um, covered uh, and you, you know, you're not going to obviously drive through water because um, you may not get out. Um, so definitely uh, worth a visit to the Mungo National Park. There's a Shearer's Shed over there. Um, there's uh, Parks Victoria. I've got quite a bit of information. There's lots of places to stay, uh, whether you're camping or not. There is a, um, a couple of places that you can stay with your dog in the area. Um, being a national park, it's a little bit limited. So we found a place that uh, I'll try and find the name of it and I'll uh, put it in the description. Um, but essentially we found a place that uh, I think it was about 20 or 30 bucks a night um, and that was a, a really lovely comfortable place again showers and um, and toilets and uh, and good facilities uh, to use um, and there was a restaurant there as well um, if you're kind of fed up with your own food uh, by that stage uh, so from the Mungo National Park, we essentially went east again, um, taking a lot of uh, dirt roads uh, towards Hay. So between Mungo National Park and Hay, uh, again, a lot of this country is privately owned. If you are going to cut through or if you do plan on cutting through privately owned land, always make sure that you get the uh, landowner's uh, permission. Don't want these guys chasing you around with uh, shotguns in the middle of nowhere because, uh, you know, Australia's not renowned for that sort of activity. But you are in the middle of nowhere and essentially um, if you get the wrong person uh, upset with you, you just don't want to upset the wrong person. Travelling through there, uh, again, beautiful country, uh, heading into Hay. And from Hay, we then uh, came down the Cobb Highway down through Daniloquin and started heading our way back to uh, Melbourne again. So um, look, there's only half a dozen or so uh, spots there that we stopped at. Uh, we did that in a week. Um, it was an uh, absolutely easy and fantastic trip to do in one week's time. Um, but you could take two weeks, three weeks, you could take a month easy and not cover a lot of this area. Um, there's so many places to go, shoot off to the sides. And, um, you know, if you want to go further north and do a much uh, bigger circle, um, it's easily done. But really, if you're just looking at a quick outback trip um, with limited, uh, you know, equipment and gear, um, essentially this is a, a fantastic trip that can be quite comfortably done within a week, quite comfortably done with most vehicles, uh, whether it be two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Um, like I said, just make sure that you're well set up, make sure you carry plenty of water. Um, these are, are, are fairly widely used roads uh, for the most part, but saying that, um, you know, you, you, can't, you can't always rely on uh, traffic coming through. So make sure you've got plenty of water, make sure you've got um, some uh, good recovery gear and make sure you've got some, um, you know, spare parts that may get you out of trouble if they need it, if you're going to need it. That's pretty much it, guys. That that's uh, you know I highly recommend uh, a trip like this. If you've got any questions, um, any concerns, anything like that, please shoot us a, a message, um, make a comment. Uh, I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, you know, if you've got any ideas or if you've got any ideas that you want to share, um, any insights that you think I may be able to uh, benefit with, um, by all means uh, share those. So there you go, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video, please, you know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Follow um, my videos. I try to put out new videos each week and um, keep them as entertaining and as short sometimes um, as I can. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you all again. Thanks, guys. See you soon.